we could see some drug smugglers. We're screwed if we do. They'll have backpacks, AR-15s, but we have camo and a shotgun. <laughs> I grew up hunting with my grandfather. I grew up duck hunting, pheasant hunting, deer hunting. I killed antelope. Got to kill my first elk about three years ago. The camaraderie is great. I could tell by being the new guy that this is like a brotherhood. And, uh, but yet, that makes you feel welcome. There's a turkey goblin right now over my shoulder. There's a lot of similarities between hunting elk and hunting turkey. We all look forward to hearing the scream of a bull elk in the fall, right? But who wouldn't want to experience the same thing in the springtime, right? When I started out elk hunting, uh, we didn't have all the calls. If I had an elk call back in the 70s, I'd, I'd have been devastating. One thing I can tell you, uh, if a turkey can smell like an elk, wouldn't be no need of even hunting him. <laughs> We're on our first morning of our turkey hunt. It's an RMEF turkey hunt. We're at the back porch ranch. We'll come back and give it our best. We are located right where the Texas Hill Country meets West Texas meets South Texas. Um, it all comes together here. It, this thing really started in Missoula, Montana. We were at a state and regional chair meeting. And Mark Toler, he was sitting with David Allen, and we were having lunch. I guess it was about 11 years ago, David Allen at Missoula said, uh, you know, we need to do an HP event in Texas. And uh, so I said, OK. So Robert Linder, I think, had a connection with uh, this particular place. I actually helped start this 11 years ago. These are all serious turkey hunters and serious hunters, period, and also lovers of improving habitat for wildlife. It's a $5,000 donation. You make a $5,000 donation to your HP, your Habitat Partnership. And uh, again, the Elk Foundation's way of just saying, you know, we're so grateful that you would give that money. And uh, so come, come go on a turkey hunt with us. This hunt, over the 10 years, this is our 10th anniversary, has generated $225,000 for the Elk Foundation. We have a lot of uh, hunters that have been with us for uh, up to all 10 years. So that's a $50,000 donation at 5,000 a minimum, 5,000 a year. There would be no turkey hunt if there wasn't a ranch. And so here we are at Back Porch Ranch. Great host and Crystal and David Watt that has graciously let us do this for 10 years. And I think just from that point, the only connection was they just kept asking if they could come back and we kept letting them. So uh, that is how that started though. I was wondering about that. Well, it's, a, it's an outdoor culture, as you know. I mean, every, everybody out here hunts and fishes and, and, and when they're not, they spend a lot of time thinking about it. The beauty of all this is I've made tremendous, tremendous amounts of friends through the years that are still close friends. You also could tell a person who might have killed out, you know? You shot a domestic turkey. That may have been. It's just relationships with people and, and experiences. Values that are dear to my heart, uh, values that uh, conservation, uh, God, family, country. I mean, you're part of the family, and it don't matter if you're, if you make a hundred dollars or if you make a million dollars. You're all, you know, they make you feel like you're everybody's equal. And when you get together, twelve hours, and these guys are probably going to eat it in about twelve minutes. <laughs> it's one event that uh, that I look forward to every every year. <laughs> Woo! <laughs>
<laughs> we did it, huh? Yeah, sir. Patterned them. <laughs> I'm so happy. Did you, you get it on film? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Oh. Time, you know, especially today, time is uh, seems to be in shorter supply, and I don't know why. I, try, I look back, um, you know, 10 years ago, I seemed to have more of it, and I don't know why there's less now. Some people work hard at the banquet. Some people give of their money. Some people spend, give of their time, and, and a lot of people give of all of those things. So it's, it's interesting. We're all volunteers. Even us board members are volunteers, of course. Time is something that you really can't uh, put a price tag on, but it's invaluable. I guess it's really, it's priceless, so. You, you know, if, if I think, if I don't give time, you know, who will? You gotta have the money to make the function run, but you gotta have passion to people that have the time and will take the time and the energy to do it. And once you get in with this group, your energy level is gonna rise. I give all the time I can, and then sometimes more. Even though we don't have the Rocky Mountains here in Texas, we would like to make sure that we visit them every year. But it's about what we can do together to make a difference because the culture is changing. And uh, if we're going to reach our younger culture, we're going to have to continue to evolve and do it in whatever way we need to do it because so many kids don't want to be outside today. I mean, that's just the truth of it. We, I think we've been able to reach a lot of adults that have never hunted in their life, which I think is a big thing. Hunting is the future of conservation. So many people don't understand that. But what comes after you? Is it just, you know, the old people give what they can, but if, if you don't have this machine developing underneath. It's, it's something that needs to be carried on. If we don't get more people involved and we can't bring people out and show them and, and do this, our little three-year-old, you know, will have, will have nothing 20 years from now. Because we're in this together. She said, I need some time to find myself. I need a little space to think. We're all kind of in the same fight, you know, and, and have the same common thread and the same love for what we do. Very simple. Grandchildren. And passion. These guys that are here are passionate about turkey hunting, they're passionate about elk hunting, and they're passionate about conservation. You've reached the $225,000 gift level with this yeah. in our park. Yeah, how about that? When I was younger, I always wanted to own a ranch and, and be able to hunt. And, and for me, I wanted to be able to offer that to people that may not have that opportunity. Um, and when he bought the ranch, that's the first thing, first thing he told us. He said, we're, we're going to bring youth hunters in, you know, we're, we're not going to commercially hunt this ranch ever, and we never have. When we do the youth hunt, there's so many, we usually do eight to 12 kids, and some of them are just, they're having an aha moment, and it's, it gives me goosebumps just talking about it, because it's so amazing how much they're persuaded by a weekend. Spend the whole day even though we didn't kill one, it's always great to be out in the woods hunting. You know, something about it. Making memories is what I think a lot of this is about, is that when I'm gone, my, my family, my kids, and, uh, and grandkids will carry on a tradition that uh, they get together and remember the good times.